Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over the hyperactive tropics. We currently have six potential storms out in the Atlantic. We have th four areas to watch and two already named tropical storms. Both of them look like they will become hurricanes. We could potentially get to the W named storm or maybe even the Greek alphabet by the end of the month. So we really have some very, very hyperactive tropics. We have two out in the, or, or out or near the Gulf of Mexico. We currently have four that are off the coast of Africa and about to move further to the west and impact parts of the Caribbean or parts of the east coast or potentially just move off to sea. So let's get right into it here. Let's start off with your current National Weather Service page. We have uh, some red flag warnings in effect for parts of Washington and Oregon as well as some, uh, some uh, I believe this is uh, den dense smoke advisories uh, in effect for parts of Oregon and Washington there. We also see that for parts of California. Lingering winter storm warnings and uh, advice advisories for parts of southern Colorado Flood watch is in effect for parts of uh, South Central Texas and I actually looked into this and they actually have quite a bit of rain that's just been stalling through here over the past day or so and they've gotten quite a bit of rain out of this over 8 inches in some locations. Frost and freeze watches uh, and warnings in effect over parts of northeastern Minnesota and northwestern uh, Wisconsin and then we also have a stalled frontal boundary uh, that's just sitting along the east coast and that is going to be providing quite a bit of rainfall and and that is why you have some flood watches from New Jersey to North Carolina there uh, for the next couple of days. So let's go right into it here. Here is your five-day graphical outlook from the National Hurricane Center. Let's start off from west and then go to the east. Now, uh, we currently have uh, that area, w that little yellow area in the Gulf of Mexico. That currently has a 20% chance of developing within the next uh, five days. That would be a disturbance two from the National Hurricane Center. That orange uh, disturbance moving into the Gulf of Mexico that is currently disturbance one has a 40 percent chance of developing within the next five days we see paulette and renee uh, which are both uh, situated out in the uh, atlantic ocean M um, right now both of them look like they're just going to stay off the shore and luckily they're going to stay as fish storms uh, but definitely we still have to keep an eye especially on paulette which has a better chance of moving on to shore but both of them have a fairly low chance that a big red swath there south of paulette and Re uh, uh, and Renee, that is Disturbance 3, currently has a 90% chance of developing within the next 5 days, so that could definitely become Sally within the next few days, and then here is uh, further uh, to the north there, we have Disturbance 4 in that orange region, currently has a 40% chance of developing within the next 5 days, so overall, very active, especially over uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and stretching to parts of the easternmost Atlantic, and that's mainly because before, earlier in the Atlantic, to hurricane season most of your tropical waves are forming down here and as you get into september and october they start to shift further to the north and so instead of forming to the south they're now forming around here and they have a lot more water to work with so they can form much much better uh, than they would be able to before now here would be uh, your Atlantic satellite view currently. Uh, we see Paulette over here. We see Renee, uh, which is currently over here. We see Disturbance 4 uh, here, and I believe this is Disturbance 3, this large air mass right here. We have Disturbance 1 here and Disturbance 2 uh, right there. So we have six storms out in the Atlantic, uh, and we actually do see some sort of circulation off North Carolina that previously did have, a, I believe, a 10% chance of developing. They did take that off because it uh, was pretty much already on land, really no chance of developing. But we do have quite a bit of tropical development. And with the way that this year has been going, a lot of these storms look like they're going to become some sort of low and tropical storm, maybe form into a hurricane, and then we'll have to see about the track. Uh, that's still to be determined. Now, uh, here would be a uh, four tropical storm Paulette, and we're just going to go through in the individual uh, storms, and then we'll go into uh, the, uh, the overall forecast from the European model. Now, uh, Paulette is expected to become a hurricane sometime Monday morning. This would be by Atlantic Standard Time. So this would be 8 a.m. Atlantic Standard Time uh, when it should become a hurricane. And then it looks like it's going to curve northward into Bermuda. And then it, uh, if you were to extend this, it would most likely curve out into the Atlantic. And that's just mainly because you're going to have a lot of upper level uh, flow in the uh, northern Atlantic. And that is going to pick up Paulette and it's just going to drive it out into the northern Atlantic and 
curve back around heading heading towards uh, Europe there. So here would be your chances of tropical storm force wind speeds, uh, and you don't see this too often, but both of the tropical storm wind speeds from Rene and Paulette are kind of combining here so you kind of have to isolate both of them right here uh this would be for paulette for the most part and this would be uh for renee further to the south and to the east right now paulette has uh has tropical storm wind speeds and it looks like it'll sustain tropical storm uh wind speeds 58 mile per hour wind speed probabilities and we have a fairly good chance about a 20 to 30 percent chance of that occurring with paulette and then your hurricane force wind speed uh, i think this should be raised to about 40 or 50 percent but it it has about a 10 to 20 percent chance right over Bermuda or so uh, of uh, becoming a hurricane or sustaining hurricane force wind speeds. Now, let's start looking at Renee, uh, and this is the male version of Renee, if you're curious. It's not two girl names in the Atlantic, it's because uh, they have to alternate it. It's the boy version of Renee, and of course, Paula is a girl name. So, uh, we have uh, th this storm most likely strengthening into a hurricane sometime uh, by 8 a.m. Saturday, uh, and this would be also by Atlantic Standard Time here, uh, and then it should stay as a hurricane, and then sometime by 8 a.m. Sunday or so is when it should uh, downgrade back into a tropical storm. Renee is going to stay further off to sh off the shore, and this is going to kind of curve out like this. Both of them are going to be pretty much fish storms and out to sea, but it's really uh, what I would uh, potential tropical storm Sally, that red region from the National Hurricane Center. That's the one that I'm eyeing up the most because that one has the best chance of becoming some sort of big storm out in the Caribbean, and we'll definitely be watching that. And I'll alert you guys. If we do see any big developments out of that now here are your chances of seeing tropical storm force wind speeds out of this storm uh, and this would be for renee and we are seeing a decent chance that you sustain those tropical storm wind feet uh, wind speeds now here would be your 58 mile per hour uh, chances of seeing winds of uh, 58 mile per hour wind speeds uh, and we have about a 40 to 50 percent chance of that occurring and then we have about a 10 to 20 percent chance of hurricane force wind speeds occurring now here is the european model and then we'll look at some of the uh, atmospheric uh, conditions Conditions and how that is going to favor or it's not going to favor uh, tropical storm development. We'll go into that a little bit later on in the video. So let's start off here. This would be by pretty much as of when I'm recording, actually a little bit earlier. Uh, so we do see we have Renee here. We have Paulette over here. We have the, that uh, red shaded area. I believe that was disturbance three or four. Uh, and then we had the one off of Africa to the north of the red region we also have disturbance number one and disturbance two out in the gulf of mexico so it's really getting difficult to track all of these but i'm gonna try and do my best throughout this model run and i'm actually gonna keep uh the highlighted regions up so uh, so that you guys can track them along easier so here would be by friday and you start to see everything shifts to the west now uh, i'm gonna redraw this here this would be uh both uh, this would be uh for disturbance three i believe disturbance four right around here uh, Renee, Paulette, and then Disturbance 1, Disturbance 2 right here. So those are your six disturbances and plotting them out. Here we go. Disturbance, uh, you're going to start to see that Disturbance uh, 2 starts to really fade away. You start to see a little bit of spin, but it's really dissipated by this point. Paulette still out in the Atlantic. Renee right here. We have Disturbance 1 over here. We have Disturbance uh Four. Uh, actually, th this would be by disturbance three, disturbance four, and then we have another one off the coast of Africa there. So quite a bit going on in the Atlantic. This would be seven storms by this point. Now uh, here, I'll erase this and then we'll continue along. You still see a little bit of a kink in the isobars along where uh, disturbance two would be, but really it's not anything too important by this point. We see disturbance one really starting to die out. So that one's pretty much not a threat by that point. And then we see Paulette, Renee, disturbance three disturbance four and then we see that one off of africa still so still quite a bit going on by this point this would be by sunday morning now here would be by monday morning and we're looking at uh paulette renee get uh, and then we have disturbance three disturbance four and then that one off of africa there so still getting very uh, confusing out in the atlantic we also do see some sort of spin right around here i'm not sure if that would if they would designate that as some sort of area to watch uh but those are your regions to watch by that point this would be by monday morning here would be by tuesday morning uh and we are looking at paul 
Paulette here, Renee here, we see Disturbance 3, Disturbance 4, uh, which is kind of splitting up, so you might actually have another Disturbance form on the northern side, and then this would be your next Disturbance off of Africa, which is still not named. Uh, now, here would be by Wednesday morning, and we're seeing Paulette really intensifying, uh, and we see Renee is pretty much non-existent by this point. Uh, we see Disturbance 3, Disturbance 4, or what is Disturbance 4 by this point, and then we see another one off the coast of Africa by this point. Uh, and we really have to watch the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. Anything can spin up at any time in that region, so just pay attention to that region over the next few days. Now, uh, let's continue this here, uh, and this would be by Thursday morning, and we see Paulette very, very intense there in the northern Atlantic we see another system I believe this would be a disturbance four, disturbance three uh, and then we see another one off of Africa one more that came off of Africa uh, so really really uh, intense stuff out in the Atlantic quite a bit of stuff going on so let's start looking at the atmospheric conditions we have uh, quite a bit of warmer waters especially through the entire Gulf of Mexico Caribbean and off the coast of the East Coast for quite a while and then we see a little bit of warmer stretching into uh, off the coast of Africa but we do see some colder sp uh, sp uh, spots over there. Still, even though you have a bit of colder weather there, you still can see uh, tropical storm development, and that is really not going to hinder development too much. It's a, a very minor uh, factor in this. So here would be your wind shear forecast. Now, some of this is just being generated by Paulette and Renee. This uh, Paulette, this is uh, Paulette's wind shear that's generating. So that is not really wind shear. This is also Renee right here. Uh, so they are generating their own wind shear, but this would be by Thursday morning, and we generally throughout the uh, throughout much of the area that these storms could develop in, uh, we have light to moderate wind shear, uh, some higher pockets off the coast of Africa, but generally some light to moderate wind shear that's not going to really pull apart a system too too much. Now here would be your relative humidity at a few thousand feet up, uh, and we are looking at drier air masses throughout much of the central Atlantic, I would say, uh, and these are just going to be periodically moving throughout uh, and again this would be by uh Thursday night or so, uh, so this isn't gonna be uh, this would this isn't gonna be the entire time. You're not gonna see a dry air mass there the entire time. It will move around, but generally you're gonna have some areas of drier air uh, that these storms will have to combat. But again, that is not gonna be a big factor in this uh, development. So there is not really too much hindering these storms just going off of Africa and developing into a tropical storm. Most of them out to sea, but one or two could impact land, and I'll definitely make more updates on that now also i want to just say i will be making my winter forecast that will be uploaded uh september 15th so my updated one uh will be september 15th so make sure you have your notifications turned on uh and i will definitely be posting that very very shortly so uh that is going to wrap it up for today's video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye